Now, of course, this is going to be your landing page. In order to find your benchmark assessments, the easiest place to find that is going to be under your blue scopes tab right here. Now, remember, you will see math and science over here for all of your content. So you still want to be able to filter out what you are going to see. So for today, we're going to look at third grade math. So now I'm looking at all third grade math content. You do have the third grade scope icon right here for your benchmark assessments. I don't believe that this will be here forever, so I do want to show you where it will permanently be, which is under this filtering system that we have here on the bottom on the left side. That's going to be called benchmark assessments right here. So you'll go ahead and click on that. Now, I have a mixture of science and math content, so I'm going to scroll through all of my science assessments that I have here. And then towards the bottom, you will start to see where it says Texas math and then your grade level. So for today's example, we will look at third grade. So I found my Texas math grade three pre-assessment. So the pre-assessment is the one that you want to take at the beginning of the school year because it is going to assess the prior year uh, content for your students. So this assessment is actually going to encompass all of the second grade standards from the previous year. So in order to assign this to your students, once you locate it, all you have to do is simply click assign assessment. Now this is where you have quite a few options that I wanted to show you. Okay, so you will of course have to pick the section that you want to receive this, so I want it to go to my math demo class. I'm going to assign it to my entire section. Now, just in case you don't want to assign it to your entire section, you can simply click and toggle on to see your individual students, and then you'll be able to choose which students you would like to receive the assessment. But for our purposes today, I'm just going to click entire section. Now, for this, you can also choose a start date. So remember very specifically with that start date, it will not show up on your student's account until that specific date and time that you choose. So let's say that you go back to school and you want your students to take this on the 24th and you want to open it up at 7. That means if I were to log on into my student account, they will not see it until this date and time that I have chosen. So I do want you guys to see it, so I'm going to change that date. Now you don't need a due date. You can definitely put that parameter on there if you would like though. And then allow late, sub uh, late submissions will always be there, but if you don't want to allow late submissions, you can always toggle that on or off. And from here, allow assignment to be accessible until a specified date. So this means after your students turn it in, they would still be able to see the work that they have turned in. So you can decide if you want that or not. Now this next one I highly suggest you utilizing. It is allow teacher to start or pause the assignment. So being in a digital world right now, sometimes you don't want your students to have access to their work during specific times of the day. So that would easily allow you to pause or start the assignment during those, uh, those time parameters that you want. This allows your students to see their work under their grades tab, but it does not tell them their numerical grade. On the teacher side, you still have to go through that process. Now here, of course, you can assign an assignment label if you would like or give your students any notes. And then, of course, you have the ability to randomize the questions. So since they're really virtual, I don't see a need for that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add this assignment. Now over here on the right-hand side, you see some details. Okay, you have that there are 29 multiple choice questions and there are three gridables. Yes, it is going to be bilingual because your students will have the option to toggle on the Spanish version and I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. And then it tells you here that all questions have a Spanish translation. Now I have already assigned this to my students as per that last window, but if you wanted the print files here, as well, you have access to those, and here's the answer key as well. Just a quick note again, since this is a third grade pre-assessment, these are actually second grade standards that you are assessing. So 
I am going to go ahead and jump into a student side so you can see what that looks like. And then I'll jump back onto the teacher side. So I'm gonna log out as a teacher and I will log in as a student. School 10. Now the assessment that I just did was this Texas Math Grade 3 pre-assessment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this so you can see what it looks like. Now this does vary a little bit differently from a regular assessment just because it does have the Spanish translations already embedded. So what that means, they have the same embedded supports that they normally have. They can increase that, um, that font size or they can decrease, they can manipulate that. They also have the text-to-speech right here. They just have to toggle that on. They have the dictionary option. And then they also have the highlighting and the comment feature that we've talked about before. Now, this is the one that we're really looking at here is the view in Spanish. So all that they have to do is click on that and it automatically switches to the Spanish content for them and it does read it in Spanish for them. So if I am to go to the next question, it keeps it in Spanish. So your students, I know that we don't have the ability at this second to just have it strictly in English or in Spanish. We do have that button at the top. All right, so that is basically what it looks like in that student side. So I am actually going to take this assessment very quickly so at this moment, what I'm going to do is I'll actually take this test really quick so you can see what it looks like on the graded side. Now I have just finished the test. So in order for us to see some data on our teacher side, I'm gonna go ahead and click turn in. Now I will go ahead and log out as a student and then log in back as a teacher so we can look at what it's, so you can see what it looks like on the teacher side. So in order to do that, you're going to look at your students tab. That's where all of your assignments go. And then you're going to click on the class that you gave the assignment. So we gave it to the math class. And I have my one assignment that's listed right here. So automatically you can see that you have the ability to pause the assignment for the students. So if it's a certain time of day, you don't want them working on it, whatever the case is, you can definitely pause that from here. So in order to look at that data, make sure that you click on that assignment name, and now you're going to get a list of all of your students. Now, the great thing about these benchmark assessments is that they were actually created by Metametrics. And so we get a lot more data from them because they do have a quantile score that is associated with your student's performance. Now, not only do you get the numerical grade, so you can see that this grade was a 28, you also can run some analytics, all right? And for these analytics, you can see the whole classroom performance. You can see a standard analytics that breaks it down by the standard. And of course, there, there will be a lot more data here when all of your students take the assessment. And then you have the, the item analytics as well. So per question, you can really group where their strengths and weaknesses are. Then you have the basic buttons that you have normally with release feedback, returning submissions, resetting submissions. And of course, per student, you're always able to view what they have done. So just in case you need to see if they highlighted any of the work or anything like that, you would be able to see what their answers were.